There are many ways to get around while living in the Philippines, and driving here, well, it's easier than you might think. However, Most of us have all heard one opinion after another about how crazy the drivers are here in the Philippines. And I'll get the occasional comment here and there about how wild the traffic is. Over the years, I may have pointed out a few things in some of my videos while actually driving, but I have never done a video exclusively about transportation or driving in the Philippines. For those who are not familiar with transportation and just getting around here in the Philippines, I'll cover some basic modes of transport you will find outside the larger metro areas. Around some smaller cities, pedicabs and motorized trikes are the most popular choices for public transport, aside from having your own motor. A pedicab is just a pedal-powered little taxi that will cover most short distances. Sometimes when Terry drives to town and has more than a few errands to run, she will park the car at the Super Metro grocery store and just make use of the pedicabs for her little jaunts around town. I think they still only charge about 15 pesos to most all downtown destinations. As long as you are not in a big hurry, they will take you right where you need to go. For getting around town a little quicker, another option is the motorized tricycle, or trike. For a few more pesos, these guys will get you through traffic quickly and rather safely. I believe in our area, the basic cost for a trike ride is 20 pesos and up, depending on the distance. Then there are the so-called center cars, or motorellas as they're known elsewhere, which can carry 8 to 10 people, or sometimes more, and all their packages. Center cars are the most cost-effective and preferred choice for many travelers in our area, going to and from the city from points outside the city. The cost of a center car ride is about 15 pesos and up, again, depending on distance. Without much suspension though to speak of, center car transports can be rather bumpy and rough riding, so one must be mindful of the roof. They are not a good choice either if you have low back issues. Jeepneys would be the next logical choice of transport for the more distant barangays or villages at points located along the highway both north and south. For city to city transport, there are private hire transports, van companies, and major bus lines that will get you there. In the province, driving is much less stressful than in the larger cities. Although some smaller cities can get fairly crowded, there are generally two main rules of the road, which, when carefully observed, help one to understand the driving methodologies in play here. The number one rule is that gross tonnage has the right of way. This unwritten rule has been a dominant trait for driving in the Philippines as long as most drivers can remember. The number two rule is, whoever arrives at the point in the road first, they too will claim the right of way. However, when in doubt, always revert to rule number one. Most times, I just yield to a lot of other vehicles and I just drive like an old farmer on a tractor on a country road. Our mantra is, we will get there when we get there. Driving in the Philippines is not location specific. And what I mean by that is, the craziness pretty much exists everywhere. Speed of travel is obviously a bit faster in the province as compared to Manila or Cebu, where things can get much more congested. Even some of the more outlying provincial cities can get bogged down with traffic, but unlike Manila or Cebu, it actually keeps moving. Back in the day, it was just public transport vehicles you had to mingle with. Today, there are hordes of POVs, or privately owned vehicles, on the road. And in my opinion, they are some of the most reckless drivers of the lot. Again, in my opinion, 
the private hire vans, the large transport buses, and large SUV drivers are the bullies of the road. They all tend to possess a certain sense of entitlement and they take all the gross tonnage rules very literally. I first drove in the Philippines when I was stationed at Kiwi Point Naval Air Station at Subic Bay. I had a car there and an 84 Honda Magna, a 700cc bike, which I plied the roadways with, and I never found it difficult to drive once I understood the two main rules of the road. When we retired to Samar in 2013, I purchased a new Honda Supremo, 150ccs, and we used that as our primary ride. It didn't take but a few months to realize that running errands in the rain was not fun. Six months after buying the bike, we broke down and bought a new car. We didn't need anything big, and if Terry was going to also drive, it had to be a smaller vehicle and one that was easy to park. Finding parking space anywhere in the Philippines can be a tough task. We settled on a Mitsubishi Mirage, a hatchback, which serves all of our needs. It's safer than riding a bike, keeps us and our groceries dry, and doubles as our own emergency vehicle should we ever find ourselves in need of one. We have observed the ambulance service in and around the Calbayag City area and well, all I can say to anybody is good luck with that. I'm probably one of the few people that actually move out of the way for emergency vehicles and I've gotten behind them in traffic and watched in utter amazement just how inconsiderate most other drivers can be. They will generally not yield to an emergency vehicle, even with flashing lights and blast of the siren. I would never subject myself or anyone in the family to waiting on or riding in an ambulance in an emergency. I'm sorry to be so blunt about how inconsiderate the drivers are here, but I'll just stick with my own private ambulance service. Thank you. The first time I ever drove to Manila was when Terry and I were completing all of our requirements uh, for, for her travel back to the U.S. at the U.S. Embassy. That was back in Manila in uh, 1986. I drove the car to Manila thinking we could save some time, and after spending a full day of getting everything done that we needed to get done, I could not find my way back out of Manila. We stayed lost for what seemed like hours until I spotted a Victory Liner bus headed for Kalaukan. My best bet was to follow this bus, then wait on another Victory Liner that might be departing for Alangapo. The plan worked well and we simply followed an Alangapo bus out of the Manila all the way back home. The reason it was so difficult to drive back then was because there were no street signs or markings, nor were there any decent maps available. One just had to be familiar with driving in and out of Manila, and I swore back then I would never again drive in Manila, and, well, that turned out to be a lie, as I've since driven through Manila twice more in recent years. Is it easier now? Well, with street signs, some improved streets and roadway markings, and with GPS, it's much easier to navigate, but these days the traffic is worse than ever. Back in the day, it was just public transport vehicles you had to mingle with. Today, there are hordes of POVs on the road, and as I alluded to earlier, they just make things worse than they need to be. Driving in the Philippines is definitely a challenge, but with the right mindset, it can be done rather safely. Understanding those first two rules I mentioned earlier go a long way towards understanding the Filipino driver's mindset. That mindset relies heavily on anticipating what other drivers will do. And while there are some very skilled drivers on the road, there are some that should not even possess a driver's license. Many don't. Know that there are many licensed drivers who have never had legitimate driver training. In many areas, those opportunities to train and educate drivers just doesn't exist. Personally, I know firsthand of a few people that actually possess a professional level driver's license and they've never attended driving classes, learned to drive, or even taken the test. Using fixtures to obtain a license in the Philippines is a problematic practice that has far-reaching consequences for both individuals and society as a whole. Over the years, there has been little focus on improving road safety in the Philippines, which is known for creating poor driving situations that are found most everywhere. Traffic laws and regulations are ignored in the Philippines, which simply exacerbates the situation. 
Then there are many unlicensed drivers who engage in dangerous driving practices such as reckless driving, speeding, and driving under the influence of drugs or alcohol. Filipino drivers tend to be aggressive on the roadways and in one sense it tends to keep traffic moving until somebody screws up. You rarely see gridlock anywhere in the Philippines unless you're in the big cities where traffic lights and traffic enforcers are involved. Sometimes I think those dancing air figures could do better at directing traffic and keeping things moving. I mean, how much more chaotic can it possibly get? But then, a brownout would screw all that up. Poorly maintained roads, lack of enforcement of traffic laws, and the high number of unlicensed drivers all lead to many tragedies that could have been avoided. Many roads are in disrepair, lack the proper lighting, signage, and safety features making driving here a real challenge. It's not the driving part that is difficult, it's avoiding situations that risk life and property damage. Bobo! Remember the movie Terminator and his electronic heads-up vision capabilities? Well, this is the visual acuity you should possess if you are going to drive here. You will learn to make multiple threat assessments in real time on a continuing basis. Good for the mind, yes, but it can be extremely taxing when you drive for long distances. A couple of things that we pay very close attention to when we drive are those drivers who pass on the right, and the speeding and the swerving vehicles. And the bullies of the road, yeah, we just let them pass, they're going to do it eventually anyway. All these risk factors are easy to spot when you are paying attention. And you should never trust a stop sign or ever assume that drivers will stay in their own lane. More importantly, never assume that you have the legal right of way. Turn signals? Forget about it. There are also driving practices that differ from where I come from. For example, in the U.S., if you flash your lights at someone, it generally means you are giving them the proceed signal. Here in the Philippines, when someone flashes their lights at you, it means get out of my way, I'm coming. This is especially true with big buses, vans for hire, and privately owned vehicles. I mentioned earlier it's not hard to drive in the Philippines, and it's definitely more mental than physical. One issue that not many talk about publicly is when a foreigner is involved in an accident. Can they be fairly represented? The odds are against that happening, and the best weapon you can have in your favor is a dash cam. And you should never settle any accident by paying cash on the spot. Never. That would clearly be an admission of guilt. And like anywhere else, you should always get a police report and let your insurance company handle it. In most cases, and if you are not at fault, your insurance company should act as attorney-in-fact in the matter. If you just take your time, learn the idiosyncrasies of the Filipino driver and their mindset, you will have few problems. Or maybe I should say, fewer problems. Oh, and will I ever drive completely through the Manila or NCR region again? I'm not planning on it. <laughs>